your daddy around? Uh, daddy? I'm 34 years old. Uh, he's somewhere in the back. Uh, I'll have to take care of you. What's the problem? Oh, I got this, this generator tank and this thing here. This, this on-off valve. This thing is leaking. Okay. And I was going to buy one off the internet, but I'm not sure if the one I'm going to buy is going to be the right one. <laughs> yeah, and chances are it's probably going to just leak again like this one did. Okay. Uh, I have a trick, actually, that will solve your problem. So okay. if you just want to leave the tank, sir, and come back in about an hour or so, I should have this all fixed up for you. Okay, and I wanted to thank you for helping my son with the tire chains on the snowblower. Oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, I'll come back later. All right. All right, bye. All right, now, what we're going to do today is, in order to fix this, on this tank, this, this uh, fitting here, it screws on the outside of these threads here. So what we're going to do is take one of these smaller hole ones and we're going to tap this out and we're going to stick it inside there and it's going to be inside instead of covering the outside. Again, it's one of them thinking outside the trailer type maneuvers that we're going to be showing you how to fix. Terrell Sr. had to take a sick day. He had some bad Rocky Mountain oysters and boy is he tore up. Ha <laughs> ha! So, in order to fix this, you need a fitting like this. You need a 1 8 pipe tap. You need some Teflon tape. Some grease. And you're going to need a crescent wrench. Croissant wrench, as the old man calls it. So what you're going to want to do, put a little grease on here. This is going to catch any kind of metal uh, shards or anything that's going to come off when you're when you're forcing it down in there. Now you're only going to want to go about halfway in. And you want to try and get this as level as you can because you don't want it cocked or angled or anything like that because it's not going to go in right. You're going to have to kind of ease it in to get it started. Now it's, it's tough finding these parts for these sizes for some of these foreign made threads and sizes and things of the sort. So this is how it's better to just tap this and put this in here. That way it's a little bit more common than say trying to find like a, a part on, on eBay or somewhere. So keep going in some. Again you want to go about halfway in. If, it, if you go in too deep, it's going to bottom out. It's not going to get tight. And you also go, also run the risk of cracking this or breaking off the tap in there, and then it's going to be near impossible to get that out. That real hardened steel in there. You want to go in again about halfway. See if we can get this speed this up a little. And then you can always take it back out and check and look and see about how deep these threads are. So there, it looks it's in there a little bit, about halfway. Now you're going to want to take some Teflon tape and get this at any kind of hardware store. Or Anywhere like that, you just want to rip a little piece off and tear it with your hands unless you're weakling. You stick this on here and wrap that around. That's gonna that's gonna help seal it. If I can get that silly thing to stay there. Screw that in. Now you're gonna want to get in the position where the fuel line is coming out, going into the carburetor. Again, you don't want to hammer it down in there too tight, so say that's about where you want it. And then there you go. That's to open and close it. Now, you can buy these fittings from a lot of different places. Rotary's got them. They got two different ones. One's one of the shut-off ones, and one's a screw-in type. The rotary number is 11271 or 1347. Stans has got them, 120-279, Oregon, 
0707-400. You can get all kinds of different fittings. Tap it out. Tap that one in. And when you pour the gas back in it, boom. And there's your dinner. <laughs>